Welcome to this tutorial. I'll be demonstrating the process that I used to paint this Chaos Raptor of the Crimson Slaughter. It has already been primed with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in grey. The first stage will be to do a base coat of Mephiston Red over all of the model with an airbrush. I have loaded my airbrush with Mephiston Red and have thinned it down with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. I'll be applying many thin coats of this colour, using a hairdryer to expedite the drying process in between coats. I will now apply the base coat to the metallic trim on the armour. These parts include all of the trim bits around the edges of the armour and some of the spikes. The colour we will use for this is Brass Scorpion. This will be our base colour that Sycorax Bronze will work off later in the process. During this stage we will base coat the bone and the cartilage on the model. The colours we will use are Rakarth Flesh and Xandri Dust. The Xandri Dust will go on the bone parts and the Rakarth Flesh on the cartilage parts on the shoulder pads. This stage is the cleanup stage. I am redefining the armor where I have gone over it with the previous colors and neatening it up for the next stage, which is a wash. Off camera, I completed a wash of Agrax Earthshade over the entire model. Now we will do the base coat of all the metallic parts using Lead Belcher. If you are following along at home, you will need to do at least two coats of the metallic as it takes a little bit more effort to get GW Metallics onto the model. Once the metallic areas are dry, go ahead and do a wash of Nuln Oil over said metallic areas. Do your best to avoid the areas that you've already washed with Agrax Earthshade. It doesn't matter too much if they are as mixing around the edges, just don't do large swaths of colour. Now we will apply the base coat to the weapon casings. The colour we will be using for this is Vallejo Model Colour Black. I prefer this over the GW Black due to its more matte finish.
Here we will begin to bring back our base colour. The colour that we will be using is Mephiston Red. My aim is to reapply the old colour to all of the large broad flat areas while leaving the very deepest recesses the shade colour. At this stage you should emphasise taking care to avoid getting this colour on any of the parts you've done in the previous stages, as correcting mistakes at this time can be somewhat time consuming. We are now going to apply the base coat over the metallic trim. The colour we will be using for this is Sycorax Bronze. Try to leave some of the deeper recesses and around the rivets the original Brass Scorpion colour. You should only need one thin coat for this stage as the Brass Scorpion should provide a sufficient base for this colour to work off effectively. We will now begin to layer the bone colour. The colour we will use is Yushanti Bone. We will be hitting all of the teeth and the skull icons all over the armour, leaving the deepest recesses the shaded Yushanti Bone colour. We will now begin highlighting the armour. This is one of the most time consuming stages of the entire process. The colour we will be using is Evil Sun Scarlet. Our goal here is not only to highlight the sharpest edges, but also to highlight the individual armour panels. To do this we will paint a thin line of Evil Sun Scarlet around the inner edge of each panel in between the panel itself and the metallic trim. As you can see this is a very precise stage. The brush I'm using for this is a size 1 Winsor & Newton. The brushes I've been using for this so far have been both the size 1 Winsor & Newton for details and the size 2 for more broad areas. I have also been using the Army Painter brushes for where more rough work is required such as applying washes.
Aim to take your time with this stage. Use very thin paint, but also try and ensure that your paint is not runny. The best way to do this is to discharge your brush immediately after you have charged it initially. To do this, you simply have to rub it on your paper towel or piece of paper before you apply it to the model. This will ensure that any excess paint is sponged off. This stage we will be highlighting the weapon casings. To do this we will need two colours. Uh, my first colour is black, my second colour is eschen grey. The eschen grey is my highlight colour, while the black we will use to clean up any mistakes we make with the eschen grey. Another thing that you may have noticed is that I have painted the flexible joints between armor components the same black as I have the weapon casings. I will also be trying to highlight these components the same eschen grey color but only on the most exposed ridges of the joints. I find eschen grey a difficult colour to work with. I have to do multiple coats and have black on hand to clean up any mistakes that I have made. Here we will also apply a very thin highlight of iron breaker to all of the raised metallic components. Try and keep this colour subtle. As you can see we are on the home stretch here. We are doing the final details. Um, we have all the colours that we need for said details laid out and yeah. The two that we will be touching are the handle of the chainsword and the lenses on the helmet. So for the handle on the chainsword, I'll be doing first a base coat of Incubi Darkness, then a 50-50 mix of Incubi Darkness and Techless Blue, and then for a small edge, whoops, then for a small edge highlight, we'll be doing uh, some pure Techless Blue on the handle. For the helmet, uh, we'll be using those three colors in the back there, Stegodon Scale Green as the base, um, I believe that's Sotek Green for to paint an oval in the rough half, front half of the lens. Then a small dot of, I believe that is Lothurn Blue at the very back of the lens to give it some depth. So yeah, let's do it. Here you'll notice I'm bringing back the Mephiston Red base color. This is because I've made a mistake when trying to do the eye, and as a result, I have to clean up. All the stage requires is to reapply the base color and then reapply the highlights. And with that, we are done. Let's go to the final review. And here we go. Our Chaos Raptor of the Crimson Slaughter is now done. I like to think I have achieved a reasonable tabletop standard with this guy. Um, base shade highlight, nothing to be ashamed about, for sure. My philosophy with painting is that the re end result is proportional to the amount of time you spend um, achieving it. As you can see, I've got a reasonable result, and to trade off, I didn't spend too long on this guy, and considering I have a lot more of these guys to go, I am quite happy with that outcome. For those of you still here, thank you very much for watching this all the way through. 
I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you can take away something from this to use for your own painting. Um, yeah, well, I'll catch you later. And if you also would like to see more of this content, I will be working on some soon, so feel free to subscribe and yeah, I'll look at getting some out to you as soon as time permits. See ya!